Hey, what's up YouTube shooting people? It's a follow-up video about my SIG uh, 1911 target model. I won this gun. Pretty nice. So this is the post-shooting follow-up. Uh, I'm going to clean this bad boy right before your very eyes. I'm sure you are um, psyched about that. Putting on some rubber gloves because I'm going to use some nasty-ass chemicals to do this. Uh, my overall impression of the firearm is uh, I like it. Uh, it's a good firearm. It does need a break-in period. It's a tight gun. It's super accurate. It's a pleasure to shoot, and it's a 1911. Now, people often ask me, Johnny Yuck 7078, why do you shoot a 1911? And I just say to them, because uh, I shoot a 1911 um, because I am an alpha male, and I am an idealized male. Um, and, um, yeah, all right, um, and plus 1911s fucking kick ass, and uh, anybody that thinks they don't kick ass is a fucking douchebag. Are there any questions? I didn't think so. Ah, uh, it's my SIG 1911, like I fucking said. All right, so here it is, Target 1911, beautiful gun. I got an attitude problem today. <laughs> I made a bunch of videos, you're going to see them. I got a real attitude problem today. And the, my attitude problem is, is comes from the fact that I'm sick and fucking tired as a middle-aged white man of getting fucked over nonstop. And uh, I fucking had enough, and I'm fucking cranky. And I'm cranky enough that I took the fucking day off of work today because I don't want to deal with any other fucking bullshit. So I'm spending the day with me and my German Shepherd, and um, yeah. <sighs> Deep breath. My doctor tells me stress isn't good for me. Um. And if that's the case, why the fuck does he keep telling me I need to lose weight? But anyway. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not as crazy as I seem because I'm actually just nuts. Uh, all right, so the SIG 1911. It's a good, good gun. It's a nice gun. I like it. Uh, and uh, it's nice to shoot. So what we're going to do is break this baby down. And we'll check it for wear and fit and finish. If you're handling a firearm at your bench, uh, make sure it's unloaded. The way you make sure a semi-auto is unloaded is you make sure first there's no magazine in here. Okay. Second, I'm going to rack back the slide. I'm going to look down the chamber. Okay. I'm going to physically inspect the chamber like old Mary Jane Rotten Crotch that I used to date in high school. And then um, I'm going to let my slide forward. I'm going to point my firearm in a safe direction and squeeze the trigger. That third part, ha uh, slide, hammer, that's something you learn in competition. You don't necessarily need to do that. If you can do that, in other words, you have a safe direction to point your firearm, it's a good, a good idea. If you want to create a safe place to point your firearm, uh, I happen to have one here. I know that there's nothing on this side of my bench besides a three-foot thick stone wall. Um, you can take a five gallon bucket, fill it up with sand, cut a hole in the top, put your muzzle in there and, and fire it. All right, That will work for you. Make sure you put a top on it because if, if it, God forbid, did go off, you're going to get blowback from the sand. And it's messy, messy. All right, so here we go. Let's break this bad boy down and see what she looks like. This is normal, standard disassembly, so I'm not going to go through the whole disassembly baloney, but let's just take apart the parts, take apart the parts, take apart the pistol, and start looking at the parts up close. Here's our bushing. Bushing looks good. There's no excessive wear or anything like that. Nothing crazy going on here. This bushing looks pretty good. Um, look at my cap. That looks pretty good. Recoil spring. I think these recoil springs are a little bit weak, to be honest with you. Uh, let's zoom out here. Let's take our slide off. Couldn't be easier. One of the great things about 1911s is they're, you know, they're a pistol that you can 
disassemble with really no tools. That bushing fits wicked tight. That will break in. And for, you know, for this particular gun, it makes sense why they would do that. Now, if you look at this, this is something I always say about slide glide. It stays pretty much where you put it. It's where the rail should be. Now, one thing that's really nice about this gun is I put about 300 rounds through this thing. And I want you to just see here, those rails look real good. There's no wear marks anywhere on this pistol, which means the, the so far the slide, the frame fit, frame fit was um, done very well. Our guide rod looks, you're not going to see anything on the guide rod usually. We take out our barrel, and let me just wipe off the slide glide off the barrel. So you can see it a little bit better. This looks great. I mean, really, it does. A uh, nice pistol. This, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, every pistol is going to be a little bit different because they're, they're, you know, they're individual pieces. The only wear I see is right here where the barrel is slightly fit, flared. And that makes sense given that it's um, a target model and you want that bushing fit tight. You saw the, you know, I had a struggle with it to get um, the bushing off the gun. So that makes sense. But if you look at this barrel up close, so we can get it to focus in for you, um, there's no wear on it really. Even on the hood, there's, you know, a little bit here. I don't know if you can even see that. But that's pretty friggin' minimal. So this thing. Barrel lug seems to be great. Uh, n no issues. None. Which is very, very nice. Uh, let's look at the slide. Of course, there's nothing on the outside. All your wear is going to be on the inside, of course, right? But if we look at this close up, you can see in the slide, there's really, this is just brass. This is how your rounds get stripped off the magazine. That's, that's normal. you got to have that. Uh, and I don't see any wear or tear anywhere on this. Let's just go ahead and wipe off the rails with a patch. Yeah, very good. So, uh, my overall impression of the SIG 1911 target model, uh, I love this gun. It's a very nice gun. Um, the pros are it's accurate. It seems to be reliable. Uh, it did need a little. The cons are it did need a break-in period. One of my pet peeves is that a, a gun that needs a break-in period, for the simple fact that um, I rather have them break it in for you, rather than subject it to a to a uh, incorrect break-in, or to. Um, basically make you burn up a lot of money on ammo to break it in. This idea that you have to shoot a couple hundred shots, depending on the caliber, you could look at, be looking at another hundred dollars for the gun. Now, SIG can buy that ammo for a lot less than we can, so it'd be nice for them to do the break-in, if you get what I'm saying. All right, but that's, that's not a, a deal-breaker, clearly. Um, so there's the break-in period. I think the main the recoil spring might be a little bit weak. I may change this out to a um, to a stronger recoil spring from Wolf or something like that. Now, um, having said that, I'm not sure what the poundage is, so we'll have to see. Um, but it might just be fine. I'll continue to shoot it. Remember, I told you from that last video. When I lubed it more and after I shot it for a while, the failure to go into battery um, or, or chamber rounds, uh, and this, was, this happened on reloads too, um, was much of less of an issue. So that could have just been breaking, like I said. Um, the other thing is, uh, the only other pet peeve I have about the gun is the slide design. I think it's pretty. You can see it's got this kind of fender look to it. It's kind of squared off. It, you know, it's got the. It'll remind you of, of of a Sig pistol if you look at this compared to other 1911s. But um, this makes it a little bit more difficult in terms of finding holsters for them. Um, so that's a bit of an issue. The other thing I'm not a big fan of is the rear sight. 
And the reason I'm not a big fan of that rear sight is that um, I don't like the fact that it sticks out past the end of the slide. But that's the target sight that came with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it functions just fine. It doesn't seem to move. And that's what the sight picture looks like. But um, um, you know, for target bullseye guys, this is just fine. For um, people that are shooting IDPA, it's also fine, but probably uh, I will change this out. The nice part about it and the flip side of this is that this sight seems to be is uh, dovetailed, although it may be pinned from the... Oh, it is pinned. It's dovetailed and pinned. There's a pin in here, too. See that pin? So that friggin' sight ain't going nowhere. Uh, the flip side of it is it's changeable, but it's not a, the front sight's not adjustable. It's all through the rear. Okay, that's all I got for you. Great gun. I recommend you check them out if you can find them. I mean, you know, it seems like we ran out of guns in the United States. You know, can you imagine that?